of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil invite you to Let George Do It. The Adventures of George Valentine, brought to you on behalf of Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Tonight's adventure begins as George, feeling very safe after making a special trip downtown to pay the premium on his accident policy, walks briskly down an isolated street to where he has parked his car. Suddenly, from the open stairway of a building, a cascade of small round pellets bounces to the pavement, followed closely by a young woman in great haste. There is a collision, and George hits the sidewalk with the force of a blockbuster. <laughs> Are you hurt? Oh, you don't have an extra sacroilla yak on you. Can you get up? I, I think so. Well, then, do you mind? Do I mind what? Getting up off the pavement. Well, if I'm in your way, couldn't I just slide over? You're lying on my pearls. Pearls? Oh, good. I thought those lumps were misplaced vertebrae. No. Hey, uh... Oh, thank you. Now, let me see. That makes 32, 33, 4... Yeah, here's a few in the gutter. Oh, good. Yes, 35... 36, 37. Have you seen any teeth down there? They're mine. Oh, I'm sorry you fell down. 38, 39. Oh, here's one of my trouser cups. Thanks. 40. Oh, I see you, you little rascal. 41. 41. 41. Lots of 41s, aren't there? I've lost one. There were 42. I've lost one. Oh, good Lord, what'll I do now? They'll kill me for this. Oh, come now, lady. Where is it? Where is it? There were 42 of them. What have you done with uh, it? Well, I, I'm afraid I've kicked it down that sewer drain. What? You kicked my pearl down the... Where? I don't see it. All over there, see? Here, through the grating. Oh, were you lucky? Landed right in that Sunday cup. Oh, I see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank heaven. But how did we get it out of there? Well, it's a very delicate engineering problem. I need a long stick and, uh, and a chewing gum if you're through with it. Here. Thanks. Now, let's see. That's lucky. Here's a stick. That's my do it. Uh-huh. Can you reach it? No. No, not long enough. You know, that's quite a drop down there. Oh, good Lord, if anything happens to that pearl. Well, I hate to do this, but... Are you going down there? Uh, huh? Here, hold my coat, will you, lady? All right. There's a ladder in here. Don't fall down and hurt the pearl. Oh, thanks a lot. I'll be careful. Uh-huh. Got it. Give it to me, quickly. All right. Catch. Oh, ah, nice one. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing thanks with that ladder? Thanks a lot, Haston. You've been very helpful. Hey, what is this? Put that ladder back. Uh, the least we can do is leave things like we find them. Hey, come back here, you. What's the matter with Don't you? Don't worry, lover. A heavy rain out of thought you're right up to the top. Sorry, I just can't stand saying goodbye or answering questions. Well, I'll be... A... Hey, help! Yes? Something for you, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, this looks like the right place. Are you Mr. Zaghetti? To be precise, Bela Zaghetti. I am he. Oh, Mr. Zaghetti, I can see by the layout here you're a jeweler. Now, I wonder if... To be uh... precise, I am not a jeweler. I manufacture artificial gems. Uh, to put it this way, I do my small part to brighten the lives of those who otherwise are not very bright. Is this exact? Yeah, probably... Well, what I want to know is, have you recently brightened the life of a young lady with a string of artificial pearls? To be precise, a blonde, Miss Dale Quillen. Yeah, that's right. I saw her coming out of this building, and I thought that... A uh... beautiful job. Smooth and pink and utterly perfect. Yes, yeah, she was. To correct myself, I refer to the string of matched imitation pearls. Ah. Pink ones. Forty-two on a rope. She was pretty particular about the specifications. Oh, yes. They were a duplication of... But uh, if I may ask you a question... Sure, of course. Uh, to put the question in this way, why do you ask this question? Well, I, uh, I admired her set. I was interested in buying it, but she wouldn't sell. I wondered if you could arrange for me to have a duplicate set. Oh, it would take many months. How much would it cost? Uh, to be precise, $300. <laughs> 
Well, that's a little too precise. She told me you made hers for 200 But no, it was the same. The price is no different. Oh, well, maybe I misunderstood. But I'd like to check. Not that I distrust But no, you, there but... is no doubt. I am an honorable man. Please, verify this. Yeah, I'll do that. If you'd like to give me her address. But, of course, I have a record of my sales. You will find out. That's all I want, Mr. Zaghetti. I just want to find out. <laughs> George, anybody who'd go down into a sewer pipe after a blonde deserves everything... Oh, now listen, Brooks. See, I didn't follow her into the sewer. I was doing my good deed for the day, and she ran off with my coat and wallet. Hmm. What were you looking for, a merit badge? Oh, now, Brooksy, listen. Well, it's a nice way to meet a girl, I must say. Sprawl senseless in the gutter. And all she has to do is blink those big brown eyes and... Blue eyes. Blue eyes. And you go scurrying down the drain pipe like a... Like a... Rat. Rat. Thank you. And then because you're caught in your own trap... Well, that'll teach me to keep my trap shut. You come cringing back to me like a... Like a... puppy. Puppy. And you expect me to feel sorry for you. So she jilted you. Good for her. What were you trying to prove anyway? Well, I guess I was just trying to prove I was willing to start at the bottom and work up. Brooksy. What? You're not mad. Oh, George, of course not. But I hate to see a woman make a fool out of a man like you. Another woman, that is. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to prove to her I'm nobody's fool. I know you're not, darling. Yes. Huh? But I'm working on it. Hey, wait a minute. Here we are. Yeah, you're right. There's the number. 7700. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. Sure you want me to come along? Unless you're afraid of the competition. What? Oh, aren't you smug. Lead on, Macduff. Yeah, here's her name on the box. Miss Dale Quillen. I'd like to give her a piece of my mind. Now, Brooksy, let me do the talking. Yeah? Miss Dale Quillen? You're kidding? I mean, I mean, she means, is Dale Quillen at home? You're kidding? Well... Is he kidding? Well, someone is. Hey, did you get a look at that house? What, through that solid wall of muscle? Well, the place is a wreck. Furniture turned over, paper scattered on the floor. Poor housekeeper as well as a crook. What are you going to do? What is this, a gag? Um, we've decided to wait. What are you, a mad character or something? Blow. Oh, come off it now, handsome. Anybody can see you've got a heart as big as all outdoors. Yeah? Then stay outdoors. Hey, character, get your foot out of the door, I'll chop it off. You know, you could be a lot of company for us while we're waiting. Yes, sir. A lot of company. Yeah? Give me your address and I'll drop you a postcard. If you want it any clearer, I'll step outside. Come on, I dare hey, you. Take it easy, Claire. I warned you, Joker. Oh. Uh, let it go now, Ben. You're too quick with the fist. You're uh. all friends now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great little equalizer you got there. It is small, but persuasive. Bring him in, now, Ben. I think we have interest in common. Come on, uh, you. In one come... piece, now, Ben. Perhaps you can take him apart later. Inside, kidder. Easy. Yes, Nubbin is just a big, playful child. He loves to take things apart, but he has never quite learned how to put them together again. Now, shall we talk? We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's go from assault and battery to just plain battery. For thousands of Western motorists, October means a lot of weekend driving, like football games and hunting trips. But for the battery in your car, October means extra work and power drainage because of the colder weather and lots of stop-and-go driving. So let me give you a two-way economy tip. First, depend on the men at your standard station or independent Chevron gas station for periodic battery checkups. They have all the equipment and know-how for keeping up your battery's maximum power and for giving it longer life. Second, when you fill up your tank, ask for Chevron Supreme gasoline. Tailor-made for each different climate and altitude zone, high-octane Chevron Supreme assures instant starts, eliminates grinding on the starter, and drain on the battery. So for definite battery economy in colder weather, just remember regular battery checkups at any Chevron gas station or standard station and Chevron Supreme gasoline.
And now back to the second part of 42 on a Rope, tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Well, it seems that George's curiosity following his strange encounter with a mysterious girl and a broken string of pearls has landed him in a tight spot. For minutes now, Baptiste and Nubin have been questioning George and Claire until... I've told you everything I know. This girl, this stale quellin' made me look silly, so I came here for an explanation. Now I feel even sillier. You have come here looking for something. So have we. Naturally, we are all sincere people. Perhaps we can help one another, uh, Monsieur... Valentine. George Valentine. And that depends on what we're looking for. Naturally. Pink pearls, no? Forty-two on a rope, is it not? We're looking for Dale Quillen, remember? Naturally. Because when we find Miss Quillen, Baptiste Lavon also finds his pearls, n'est-ce pas? I wouldn't know. Who's Baptiste Lavon? Oh, my apology. It is I. Oh, I see. Well, what makes a string of phony oyster fruit so important anyway? Phony? <laughs> I do not know this phony. Ringers, fakes, dupes. Artificial, counterfeit, paste. Ah, the replicas. You refer to this fraudulent string, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's it. Where'd you get them? Uh, they were left by Miss Quillen at the check room of the Union Station. She sent me the claim check. At the same time, no doubt, boarding a train for some distant city. Why would she do that? Because they are worthless. Good imitations, no more. Value, perhaps $300. As you say, phony. You're trying to say she pulled a switch on you? Ran off with the real pearls, your pearls, and left you the ringers? That is correct. As always, Baptiste Lavon was sincere. I trusted her with 42 exquisite gems. Gems collected by no other than Louis XIV to give to his Antoinette. Tell me, Lavon, where did you get hold of Marie Antoinette's choker? Ah, spoils of war, Monsieur Valentine. As an officer of the Vichy government in France, my job was to appraise and catalog war prizes for the victorious Nazi. Naturally, the sincerity and integrity of Baptiste Lavon were above approach. Naturally. So you held out the match picks. Naturally. Oh, when the fortunes of war were reversed, Baptiste Lavon reversed too. Uh, Miss Quillen came to Paris with an entertainment unit, and uh, we became uh, friends. And she smuggled them into the States for you. Oh, that is correct. That'll teach you not to be so sincere. Are you kidding? Well, hello. Now, uh, you are friends of Miss Quillen. You see my predicament. Uh, I must know where she is. You will tell me? I've told you. I don't even know the girl. Your mode of entry contradicts you. You are her confederate. We are not quite fools here. Yeah, we ain't no dopes, you know. You do not help nothing. Well, <clears throat> mm, they're stubborn. Now you may take the men apart. The girl adores him. She will weaken first. You may proceed. Yeah. I'll loosen him up first with my belt. Then I'll get technical. No, don't. He doesn't know anything. Let go of my arm, lady. Stop it. Let him alone, you fool. Can't you see he doesn't know anything? You won't let go, Baptiste. Hey, I would advise you to do as nothing said. Where? Better sit this one out, honey. I won't let them. I... Who's that? Uh, I don't know. It seems to be a messenger of some sort with a package. Package? package. I will not insult your intelligence by warning you to keep quiet. Answer it, Nubbin. Yeah. I've got a package here addressed to uh, Handsome. <laughs> handsome, that's all the name it's got. That's me. I'm Handsome. You? Are you sure? You're kidding? Give me the package. Well, can you uh, identify yourself? Sure. Take a good look at me. Now, wouldn't you say I was handsome? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. You got pretty eyes, too. Okay, give me the package and dust. <laughs> handsome, isn't it? This is surely not Nubbin, nor is it Baptiste Lavon. Handsome, then, is Monsieur Valentine. Oh, no, not me. No, it's Oh, not. yes, Monsieur Valentine. I will open the package for you. Sacre bleu. They're not here. It's nothing but a map. Yes, but a large map of the city with four small crosses marked on it. And these words, X marks the spot. But there are four X's. Yeah, one at High and 23rd. And one at Elm and Valley. And 14th and Underhill. And cast and granite. Four spots marked with X. What does this mean, Monsieur Valentine? Well, how should I Oh, know? go ahead, handsome. Tell them. They'll find out anyway. What? What are you... Oh, yeah, okay. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? She planted the 42 real pearls in different places. So even if you found one hideout, she'd still have three quarters of them hidden away at other places. Excellent. 
You know these hiding places? Naturally. Excellent. We will all go hunting. Nubbin, the young lady, you and I, and the gun. Please do not forget the gun. Here's the first stop, Costa and Granite. Where am I going to park? Pull up to the curb now, and let us out. And drive around the block and pick us up here. Okay. Now, where, where is it? Quickly. I cannot control myself. Well, you see that big office building there? Y- yes, yes. You see that window up there with the jeweler's sign? Well, I, I don't see it. Higher. Look higher. No, no. Where is it? No, it's higher yet. That's higher. No. Oh. Come on, Brooksy, run for it into that theater. Oh, George, we haven't been to a movie in ages. (laughs) Oh, it's a cartoon. Good, I could stand a laugh. We didn't come in here for laughs, Brooksy. Do you think LeBon saw where we went? I don't know. Pretty dark in here. Can you see? Oh, little. It's crowded. <laughs> Maybe we'd better take singles. You leave me alone and I'll scream the place down. Okay, okay. Hey, that looks like two in the middle there. Good. Excuse us, will you? Pardon me. I beg your pardon. Oh, this is fine. We can hold hands. Oh, George, are you all right? I think so. Oh, shh, shh. oh, did you see that? That was very funny. The mouse was run over by a steamroller. I know just how he felt. Shh. What's it all about, George? What did those four X's on the map really mean? I don't know, but I'm working on it. You think we're safe in here? Well, there are four X's and we're right in the middle. Wait a minute. Shh. Quiet, I please. got it, Claire. That's it. The four X's and us in the middle. Shh, quiet. What, you two? No, look, George. There's LeBon coming down the aisle. Yeah, Nubbin's coming down the other aisle. Oh, I don't think they see us. Let's get out of here. Oh, George. Oh, gosh, now I'll never know how the mouse got out of the cement mixer. Is anybody following us now, George? No, I think we've shaken them. Driver? Yes, sir? Got a map of the city? Yeah, hey, huh? Good, thanks. Say, pull over to the curb a minute, will you? Sure. What is it, George? I only hope LeVon doesn't figure it out as fast as I did. Hey, you got a pencil, Brooksy? Uh, yeah, an eyebrow pencil. Good, thanks. Hey, now look. You remember the four intersections where the X's were? Yes. Now, I fold the paper here yeah. and draw a straight line from this X to this X. Fold it again and draw another from here to here. And you get a big X. Yeah, Brooksy. X marks the spot intersecting at DeLong and King Avenue. And that's where we'll find Miss Dale Quillen. You, you made it. Hello. And you did mean me. Of course, who else? I don't believe we've met before. I'm Claire Brooks, George's fiance. Uh, secretary. Oh, practically the same thing. Looking at you, I guess it would be. How'd you know I was in your house? And how'd you know I'd get your message? I knew Baptiste and Nubbin were inside. I was watching from the vacant house across the street. I saw them take you in and knew they'd make it tough for you. What made you think I'd catch that X marks the spot routine? Well, you'd gotten that far with a lot less to go on. Also, I found your business card in your wallet. You're George Valentine, aren't you? Well, perhaps I should introduce you two. I figured you'd know the score because you're a professional troubleshooter. And rather have I got trouble. Well, if I can be of any help... Now, wait a minute. Remember the sewer, George. Oh, I'm awfully sorry about that. I was panicky. It it won't happen again. Darn white of you. Come on, let's get away from here. First of all, suppose you tell us what you did with Marie Antoinette's necklace. After you. I, I haven't got it. I don't know where it is. Oh, well, that helps a lot. Take off, driver. Any of it here. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this. All we know is that you've smuggled the pearls into the States. Now you tell us you don't know where they are. Take it from there. I know I had them. Levon concealed the pearls in a bottle of wine. I saw him do it. They were stuck to the bottom of the bottle with wax so they wouldn't rattle. Then he filled the bottle and sealed the top. 
I paid customs duty on the wine and got them through. Very smooth. Go on. Well, when I, when I got here, the seal was still unbroken. But, well, well, you won't believe this, but when I opened the bottle, the pearls were gone. Somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, somebody had made a switch. You're telling me the pearls were hijacked from you? It's true, I swear it. But do you think Yvonne would believe that? He'd say I double-crossed it. Men are so skeptical. Do you believe me? Well... Say you do. Say you'll help me. All right, I do, and I'll help you. Oh, swell. Now, all we've got to do is find the person who stole the pearls from the girl who smuggled them in for the boy who stole them in the first place. <laughs> It's okay, Dale. This is my office. You'll be safe here. Yes, I'll see to that. Come on in, Claire. And shut the door. Better lock it. Should I swallow the key? Why did we have to stop at the library? Why did you have to take out a book at a time like this? Well, I'll tell you. And listen carefully. Levon's desperate. We've got to have some answers ready for him before he catches up with us. Oh, I have a feeling he's close by. You don't know him like I do. He's closing in on me. I know he is. Look, Dale. Look. Keep calm. He's not in the filing cabinet or under the desk. Hey, Brooksy, open the closet door and show Dale he's not in there pointing a gun at her head. Okay. I have a surprise for you. He is. Huh? Keep your hands away from that desk, Monsieur Valentine. Back up, please, both of you. Miss Quillen, remain where you are. Oh, no. No, I knew it. I knew it. Face the wall, both of you. Your hands high. Higher. Nubbin? Yeah, Baptiste? Keep them covered. If either one makes a move to interfere... Squeeze the trigger twice. I'll do that thing. And that's no gag, Joker. And now, we come to you, Sherry, at long last, eh? Baptiste, listen, you've got to listen. You've got to give me a break. You made a fool of Baptiste Lavon once. For that alone, I hate you. Should you do it twice, I would hate myself. No, Sherry, your luck has run out. I didn't double-cross you, Baptiste. I swear I didn't. No? What do you call these? Pearls? You rotten little cheat. Don't listen. I had them made, but give me a chance. I can explain. No, Sherry, they're phonies. Phony like yourself. That piece of pearls, they were, they were gone when I opened the bottle. Somebody took them. You've got to believe me. You carry the light to the end, eh, Sherry? <laughs> Your last chance, my darling. Where are the pearls? I don't know. Don't move. Stay just as you are. I want to remember you like this forever. Bonsoir, Sherry. Hold on. Quiet, Joker. I know where the pearls I are. I said quiet. Wait. What was that, Monsieur Valentine? Call off your dog, Levon. I'm ready to talk. Don't listen, Baptiste. He's a kidder. You can talk, Monsieur Valentine, from where you are. All right. Your story about Marie Antoinette's necklace got me interested in famous jewels. I've been to the library and picked up a book. That's it on my desk there, the red one. Now, go on, open it. To the page I have marked. If this Wait, is a nothing. Gang. The book, yes. Jewels of history. Go on, read it. Read what it says. I am reading. What is it, George? It's Dale's life insurance, Claire. Uh-huh. I have read it. Well? Well, I guess you win, Valentine. Can we put our hands down now, Levon? <sighs> of course. Let them alone, Nubbin. You have very nearly made a tragic mistake. I thank you, Monsieur Valentine. Baptiste Lavon thanks you. I don't get this, Baptiste. Come, Nubbin. We've worn out our welcome. Monsieur Valentine, we will trouble you no more. You will never see us again. Bonsoir, chérie. Now I will remember you always as you were in Paris. Oh, well, the miracle, that's all it was, just a miracle. What did you do to him, George? What was in that book? Read it, Claire, out loud. Oh, yes. Cleopatra's pearl. Cleopatra, to impress Mark Antony, once dissolved a pearl in vinegar and drank it to his health. Dissolved it? Now, wait a minute. Listen. Go ahead, Claire. Pearls which consist of carbonate of lime are extremely soluble in weak acids. They will dissolve in vinegar containing 6% or more of acetic acid or in wine which is turned sour. It was the wine that did it. The wine in the bottle. According to the U.S. Bureau of Chemistry and Soils, pearls consist of 91 and 7 tenths percent. Never mind the rest, Claire. That's enough. Well, how do you feel now, Dale? Oh, completely dazed. Levon didn't have an argument in the world. He knew he planted the pearls in that wine bottle himself. 
He had nobody to blame but himself. I can't believe it. You saved my life tonight. Oh, George. Now what? Now I have to go to jail. Well, it's going to be kind of hard to hold you there. Why? Well, technically, since there weren't any pearls in the bottle when you brought it through the customs station, you actually didn't smuggle anything in, even though you meant to. Levon filched the pearls from the Nazis, but I doubt if any of them will turn up to claim them. No, it was all a wild goose chase for something that simply didn't exist. Well, I'm going to confess my part of it and take what's coming to me. First, George. Yeah? May I kiss you? You saved my life, Miss Brooke. May I? Where I'm going, it'll be a long time between kisses. Well, things aren't much better around here, but... Oh, all right, go ahead. Honestly, I think I must be going loony. Goodbye, George. Uh, Dale. (laughs) Just a minute. Yes? Be a nice girl and hand it over. What? Oh, come on, Dale. You certainly haven't forgotten why I got into this in the first place. And if you think I'm going to let you walk out of that door with my wallet... You're loony. If your family car is the kind that does all-around duty, like taking mother shopping, dropping the children off at school, picking up father after work, you can't choose your tires too carefully. That's why I'd like to talk to you tonight about Atlas Grip Safe Tires. The Atlas tire has a specially designed tread that actually grips the road and brings you to a sure, safe stop whenever you apply the brake. Tomorrow, ask at your independent Chevron gas station or standard station about the built-in safety features of Atlas tires. Then try them on your car for extra protection and extra riding comfort. Best of all, when you buy an Atlas passenger car tire, you get a written one-year guarantee against the cuts, bruises, and blowouts that threaten the life of ordinary tires. While you're talking tire safety and comfort at the standard station or independent Chevron gas station, ask for those two other motor car friends, Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Motor Oil. <laughs> Next week, when you tune our way for The Joke Was on the Killer, another adventure of George Valentine, you'll hear George saying, Some joke, I'd say. Brooksy, see what's happened to Mrs. Ralston, will you? Oh, well, sure, George. Glenn, he made me go through with this part and shoot those blanks. Well, he's not going to do anything like that to you again, Agnes. Wait a minute. Listen, everybody. This man is dead. We've had enough of this vicious nonsense. You're part of this, too. This act, Valentine. Now I know it. And you, get up. Oh, leave him alone. Come and help me with Mrs. Ralston, George. Now, stop this, all of you. What Just do you what do I have to do to make myself clear? This started out as a joke, but it's no longer funny. This man is completely, hopelessly dead. Clinic care, hospital care, a visiting nurse in your home. They are made possible by funds from Community Chest. Thousands of persons, old and young, benefit each year from health services of Community Chest. So give generously this October for your community's health and welfare. Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West invite you to be with us again next week for The Joke Was on the Killer, another adventure of George Valentine, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Tonight's story was written by Doug Hayes and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were George Sorrell, Jim Nusser, Betty Moran, Jack Crucian, Victor Rodman, and Dick Ryan. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. KHJ Los Angeles. Memo from stationers. Here are ballpoint pens for every purse or pocket. <laughs> <laughs>